Welcome to the Monday Night Men's Forum. I'm Matt of Farm Hop Life. Tonight, we're talking about capitalism and socialism need each other. But first, we have Christopher, securecoop.com, John with Amber Oaks Ranch, and Patrick, Blue Glade Farm. Welcome, gentlemen. It's the first time. Hey. So Thanks. we'll go around. John and Patrick. Share a personal event. Uh, Christopher, go ahead. Yeah, well, I'll share them with you on Telegram. Um, when, we moved, <laughs> <laughs> when we moved into this property, we didn't realize that what we were doing is illegal. And uh, went back and checked on it. Oh, crap. Now we're stuck here. And then uh, we had a Karen in the neighborhood decide to call um, the uh, county on. A lot of people around us are doing the same thing in RVs on property. And it's not legal in most places in Florida, but you'd be surprised. Like, Florida is okay with you living in a trailer park, but they're, for some reason, not okay with you buying your own property and living on it. So, whatever. Anyway, so uh, they called, they, she called the county on a lot of people around us, including our next door neighbor, uh, who has a camper, but it's not living in it. And we thought, well, crap, when they go over to inspect her property, they're going to see our RV, like, panicking and we're wondering what we're going to do. And uh, and then there was a special meeting called by the community because she she upended like there's like 700 people in this town and she upended like a whole tenth of the whole town, you know, just a big chunk of the town. And so there was a special meeting called and we all and we went down there and we checked it out. And uh, it turns out the county is not interested in pursuing this matter. I mean, I think it's because if they turned out everybody on the streets, they'd have an instant homelessness crisis on their hands. And, you know. <laughs> they're not gonna they're just not gonna just do that for people who are just minding their own business so um so uh if and we're like Whew, breathe it. sigh of relief on that and uh, then i found out also that there is a way to get a medical exemption for mother-in-law and sister-in-law both are disabled and who can hmm. get an exemption uh spy so i'd feel even better i feel i feel great now and i feel even better uh, you know, with that exemption. And then uh, mother-in-law really, really needs it because this morning she had a mini stroke. Oh, and, geez. Yeah. Um, she's able to talk and, and walk with health, but she's not doing good. So she's in the hospital right now. Uh, they think she has a clot in her, her neck and uh, they're going to give her thinners and um, keep an eye on her. She's really active. Uh, very good, healthy person, uh, like from, from look, looking at her, but she's a diabetic type two, sure. which is not, not associated with, with weight. She's just, I mean, I don't know if type one or type, I think type two, but anyway, um, so yeah, we, we found that this morning, like, oh boy. Um, so we would maybe really be, you know, we were talking last week about, you know, are we going to have to move away and where will we go? And. With her having that stroke, I think it's more important than ever that we be here. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Good case for the medical exemption. Good case. That, if ever there's a reason for that medical exemption, that that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's Thank uh, you. the drama. What a whirlwind. Whirlwind yeah. weekend. Yep. John, uh, do a real quick introduction, like where you're at, what you do, yeah. and uh, personal events. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so uh, John Panalone uh, uh, own Op Amber Oaks Ranch. We're in Central Texas. Uh, we raise beef, pork, chicken, and lamb. Sell at the local farmers markets, etc. Um, and so the question was, uh, what a personal event like from? Yeah, from did you have a good Father's Day? What'd you do? Something cool yeah. on the? I saw you fix your bulldozer. Uh, yeah, yeah, got that operating. Um, took uh, three pigs to the butcher this morning. Um, had a good yesterday with my uh, in-laws uh, for Father's Day. Uh, so, yeah, life is good. Had the day off because it's a federal holiday, so that's cool. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you take them where you can get them. That's right. Exactly. Patrick, welcome. Thank you for being what? here. I'll, I'll celebrate that for you. Yeah, I'll take the yeah. day off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm Patrick Heiser. Uh, I have a farm out in Western Maryland, uh, and I too had the day off. And between Father's Day and today, I got a lot done on the farm this weekend. 
Nice. But I guess the highlight was I attempted to propagate strawberries for the first time. So let's hope they root and the bounty right. will double. Yeah. From the so daughter like what? Uh, offshoot? You like you take the runners or what do you take? Yeah, so what I did is I, I clipped off all the runners. And I took a big plastic bin, put like an inch of compost in the bottom, and then just soaked it like real wet. You know, stuck all the runners down in and then put the top on so and put it in the sun so it gets all humid and you know yeah, they can conserve water better. Hope it works nice. for you. Yeah. Good. That should work. Yeah, sounds like it would. Uh we got 25 baby chicks last week. And so oh. like I posted posted a video of um you know, like picking them up and intro like my son like checking them all out and everything and they were doing like he's like pretty excited trying to get him like to do do like certain things it's kind of frustrating but he's he's learning and i'm making him try uh we lost one yesterday i think it got too hot um so we got 24 left so how did he take that um i, I don't, he's three so I'm not sure it all clicks, but yeah. I, I had to like, you know, introduce him to it at some point somehow. And so I didn't do like any like research, like how to introduce your kids to death. And so just like, you know, here's, you know, this baby chick died. It, it's not living anymore. We have to do something with it. You know, we have to do better. Like mm -hmm. what he's like asking why, 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 why? And so just like, you just kind of run out of answers. like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's not like he had nightmares or anything like that last night. Like, am I going to die? And uh, ask some questions like that. Like, I don't want to answer that one yet. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> uh, probably someday. So, but anyways, he's, he's still very excited. He says good morning to them every, every, every morning when he gets up uh, and uh, that's cool. tells them good night. So it's really funny. And you probably won't get that question. I I never did. You know, it might be you no. Know, like my kids just sort of put that two and two together. Maybe so, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He he likes to ask why and then not really listen to the answer. So <laughs> I could probably just tell him like because jelly beans are in the sky or I don't know. It's like he wouldn't he wouldn't have pay attention. So <laughs> I just I just started flipping it around on him. Like why do you think that is? Yeah. Uh. Because I've answered the same question a hundred times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did it rain? Why do you think it rained? So, but yeah, so uh, tonight, capitalism and socialism need each other. So, uh, perfect, in perfect timing, I got a, <laughs> I, I got an email from, from somebody. I'm not going to name who on the air. I will tell you guys later. Uh, after after the show because i didn't want to out them but i had they there she's in like the permaculture space and she does like she she gives away like all this stuff for free it's kind of like pay what you can kind of deal and she made this I, i've never donated before but she made this post a couple months ago saying like hey i need to move for whatever reason blah 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 uh any if you if you've already given to the thing thank you if you haven't you know i really appreciate it da, da, da. so i gave like 20 bucks or something like that whatever and so she gave an update saying, thank you immensely for your generous support this year. It has been a huge help in my ongoing search for a place to live after losing the home and garden I have for six years. Sigh. Unfortunately, I still haven't found affordable housing slash garden space. I'm in a temporary place for the summer and I've been getting all my papers in order and applying for funding, but everything is so insanely expensive. And to be honest, I'm feeling a bit crushed by capitalism in the moment but i can't give up hope of finding a place to grow food again so here i am spending a query you know any places for sale with a bit of land some established fruit cheese and a livable house within five miles of a safe diverse community for less than three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. i would love it and care for it and use it to create a free teaching resources forever and ever you know blah 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 and so i thought that was perfect for today's <laughs> show like Right. Hey, I want everything on my list and I should be able to afford it because <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like these, these things come at a cost. 
And so I actually emailed her back and I said, I don't understand. What does crushed by capitalism mean? And I have yet to get a response. So, <laughs> oh, man. I was it curious. Reminds, I, wanted, yeah, I yeah. wanted to know what she, what she meant by that. Like, I wanted yeah. to be fair. It, it reminds me of, uh, of, a, of a tweet. Uh, somebody had tweeted out, you know, what are we going to do? What do you plan to do when uh, we finally crush capitalism and we rise up and we take control of the system? And you know, somebody responded, well, I'll probably work on my farm and I'll probably do this and that. And then somebody replied, your farm <laughs> yeah that's a good one <laughs> I, uh, I did want to in the email i sent out for the invite i did want to uh oh who we got we got somebody oh jeremy hey i'm there. just sitting in the dark over there i've been sitting here for like five minutes man well i apologize because so like four, in the little menu here four fit across the bottom and then whoever mm -hmm. is the fifth one goes down so like i'd have to scroll to see you so i apologize you're, you, you're about 30 seconds for me going well, all right see ya <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. well sorry i missed um, you go no go you're, you're good are we go gonna serve the flow just for you nope keep okay. going <laughs> <laughs> i did uh put in a couple of like definitions because that's that's where everyone kind of gets tripped up like everyone's got their own definition yeah. of things yeah, so like by yeah. capitalism i don't mean like who controls the capital i mean like capitalism like business like entrepreneurship that kind of capitalism and then socialism not like a series of government but as in like socialism like helping your neighbor type of socialism whether it be like donating your time some money whatever uh some goods just giving it away with nothing in return. But so but, but that would that, be more like altruism. That's fine. We can uh, we can hash we this can, out. We can hash yeah. this out. Well, he's, uh, the socialism though is from the person who has more. They give from the person who has uh, the extra resources. They give to the person who has the need. And there was a more clever way of stating it. So it, it's of resources. it's like it's like enforced altruism. Yeah, exactly. The difference yeah. is, is altruism is, is a voluntary exchange, yeah. right? Or, or voluntarily um, um, giving for, for, no, for no expectation of return, right? Yeah, and the greater good. Right. And, and I think the key being voluntary, you know? But that depends on everybody having that same standard of wanting to give, uh, not, voluntarily not, giving. Not, altruism doesn't. Well, but if this works from a, a from the standpoint of um, at a national level, yeah, at, at a big level, like you're going to have people that will always take advantage, take advantage, take advantage. Yeah, but you can still engage in altruism, right? And sure. And, sure. And, and I think capitalism leads to a greater degree of altruism because people who make obscenely obscene amounts of money throughout history. Have always been patrons to, you know, artists and craftsmen, and they've always, you know, they're the ones that created the universities, and 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 you know, of course, the churches mm -hmm. uh, were big into altruism, right? And and though they collected a lot of money, they turned around and gave that money out. They created the universities. People have uh, um, voluntarily funded the sciences, right? And so, mm -hmm. we don't need a government to do that. Uh, is my my theory is that, and we didn't have a government in, in you know, a millennium ago to do those things. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think it's just altruism. And I think capitalism uh, promotes altruism by, you know, a, a, as a relational piece, one with the other. And it's a more pure kind of an altruism, because if somebody's holding a gun to your head to give to the guy down the street who's they, yeah, that that would be socialism. Yeah, it's socialism, and you got you know, Karen called him for living out on an RV on his land, so he's on the street now. <laughs> so, so you know, we gotta give the gotta give out, you know. And now, uh, let's um, everybody here, come on, give it up, give it up, you know. It's just it's so corruption. So this is just like a theory that I've just kind of like been working through, and I thought it might be like a good discussion. So. At what point does it turn from altruism to socialism? When there's coercion involved? Yeah, coercion. So, so um, 
like right it's there's no concrete line it's like a spectrum completely uh so like right i like your capitalism social need each other because right they're a lot closer than a lot of people think uh you know no one's saying there shouldn't be any government whatsoever unless you're an anarchist and no one's saying the government should control absolutely everything that's totalitarianism so both capitalists and socialists agree that there needs to be a mixture of government and markets it's just where they differ is how much of each and there's no clear dividing line so for example you know certain pe people on the right and the left talk about socialist health care but you know when you look around the world there's many different forms of quote unquote socialist health care for example in canada or in the uk or even the va system in america the government runs everything they own the hospital they employ the doctors they purchase the medicines they do everything this is known as the beverage model of universal health care in other countries like France, in Germany, in Japan, the quote unquote socialist nations, you know, the government actually isn't directly involved in healthcare. They just set the rules, and those rules might be a little more strict than they are in America. But then everyone, you know, the doctors, the hospitals are all privately owned. They just have to play within the tighter rule box. And then you have countries like, you know, India, where they set many less rules and right it is just a free-for-all markets so like right there's no clear dividing lines it's there's a spectrum mm -hmm. so do you, are you saying it's kind of like based on like regulation so like capitalists they kind of like regulation to kind of keep their competition down because they're already been like playing by the rules or whatever they can try to bend the rules and blah 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 and socialism like also wants like regulation but for other reasons uh no i was more saying it like right in in like the va like everyone's a government employee everything's regulated like it's all government but in like the in germany or france the government places very tight rules on things but everyone that actually operates the system the doctors the hospitals they're private employees, like they're private businesses. They just have to operate with, within a tighter sandbox. And then there's some countries that place like no rules whatsoever. And it's like just oh, what what you can pay, when you can pay, how you can pay, uh, et cetera. I, I, I'm and sorry. Like, right. You know, I, you can I, have I, one page of rules or you can have a gazillion. And like, right, there's no dividing line in the number of rules where something flips from capitalism to socialism. It's, it's a gradient. I, capitalism does not at all depend upon or have any relationship to government interference whatsoever, right? You can have capitalism completely void of any government because it is the interplay and exchange between two parties exchanging goods for services goods and services uh of, of value with one another it doesn't depend upon governments whatsoever whereas i think socialism does you know you can have a um you can have a, a, a kibbutz or what have you right that is a socialist enclave but even inside of that there are uh there's a governmental structure that exists to control the distribution of work and 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 product right uh, and so they have a hierarchical system, which is, in effect is a government on a micro scale. Uh, but capitalism doesn't require that whatsoever. It's like if I have something and you want it, then you can purchase it from me or you can exchange something with me. There's no external um, a governing governing uh, agency or, or individual, for that matter, that says that, you know, I have to do this at certain prices or or have to follow anything. Um, now, there can be contracts that we engage in and we can elicit a third party to meet it, mitigate those. But even that doesn't have to be a government. It can be a, just a third party, you know, private individual that we both agree to pay for their services. Um, and, and so. So, yeah, I don't think capitalism requires government at all. And I would argue that capitalists uh, would true capitalism would prefer no government intervention. Is there a situation that socialism can exist without government or does it always need government? 
Uh, I, I, that's a good question. Um, there has to be to in order. So, so socialism, as as you're defining it, well. So, if we're talking about altruism, I think the answer is no. There, there's not a need for government, right? But I think when you have socialism, um, your defin what you defined in the in the meeting notes for socialism, I don't think is what you mean when you use the word socialism. Okay. Uh, I think you're, what you're defining is is altruism, right? It's the voluntary giving uh, of of your resources uh, to somebody who you deem to be needy, right? Um, whereas, like I said, so socialism, you can, I mean, there's been instances of socialism where it's been practiced, right? And so, like I said, the, the Kibbutz, without coercion, without coercion, but people voluntarily join this structure of people, right? And, and there's lots of instances of that. You, you agree to go live on this parcel of land and you agree to work your, um, um, but, but here's where it gets the government involved. You agree to work. You, you agree to work your assigned tasks and you will be given from the bounty of the group what is deemed to be necessary for, you know, your family size unit. Right. Um, and so and, and so, yeah, so it, 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 there's a micro government involved. Right. Because somebody that sounds like to, communism, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, what's the what's the separation from socialism to communism? I don't know. Dissolution of government. Yeah, it's it's the it, it, it's the state sanctioning of the act of of the socialism, right? But there's still a government in socialism, because again, somebody has to be the deciding uh, individuals to decide who's going to work, and how much bounty will be distributed to everybody, right? Otherwise, it is a, a anarchy. It's like, well, okay, I'll just sit in my house all day and not do any work, and then I'll go steal from somebody else uh, for my sustenance. Um, so, so anyway, I mean, even your family is a socialistic endeavor, right? But you're the governor, you're the governing authority. You so expect, then you the expect your kids to get up and do things, right? And then you're going to give to your here. kids a meal. So then I guess, where's that line between socialism and communism? Because you said that it was, uh, there has to be a government body for there to be communism, but then it's like, is, can there be a decentralized socialism? Uh, so, so, so again, I, socialism is a, uh, it can be a voluntary interaction of individuals, but when it gets to communism, it, it really can't be because it is, it is, um, uh, you can't opt out, right? You, you okay. can leave the country, but you're effectively uh, escaping. You're running away, right? You, you can't opt out and everybody's okay with that. And so if you have a, um, a, 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 a monastery, right? You voluntarily go into the monastery and you voluntarily agree to whatever arbitrary, you know, whatever rules and mandates there are there at the, at the monastery. And then there's, there's, there's a head person of that monastery and there's people who are going to, you know, require of you to do certain things. And then you're going to get, you know, food and water and shelter as a, as a response. And people do that. That's, that's a socialistic endeavor. Everybody in the community shares uh, the wealth of that the community generates, right? But there are rules and there's somebody governing that. Whereas with capitalism, um, there is nobody governing that. You can do whatever you want with your with the fruit of your labor, and you can choose sure. to exchange that, or you can choose to die because you haven't done so, uh, because you haven't worked, and and you know, and that's where altruism comes in, right? If you're if you're in that type of a capitalistic in, endeavor, and you're hurt and you're sick, nobody's obligated to take care of you. But somebody altruistically, maybe your aunt or uncle or grandmother or what have you, will pay for your medical bills or or not, and you die. You know. So I, I guess think I'm hearing a lot of blurred lines between altruism, socialism, and communism. Like they kind of blend right into each other. So then, where on that spectrum, like if, like if capitalism is next is near somewhere to socialism, like how does that? Or is the spectrum more? I don't think I don't think capitalism is near. No, they're not the same. They're not on the same. They're not even on the same 
linear yeah. paths. Yeah. If I it's on a vault, if it's a voluntary exchange. Uh, okay, but that's um. So so okay so in inside of socialism, could you have kept no? Because I think by definition, socialism is is that you don't individually have ownership of, of ownership of all resources. You don't you don't individually have ownership of those resources. Right. Those resources are owned collectively, right? And so I don't think that there's any interplay between socialism and capitalism at all because capitalism is dependent upon um uh private ownership of yourself your goods your your time etc and i don't think that's uh i think that's excluded in socialism but so I would you say like it. altruism socialism communism is like on one linear line and then like capitalism is, is just like it's a, on its own separate no, linear. well i i guess um uh, I, again the definitions laid out in the meeting notes there Ex described an activity where people voluntarily take care of other people right right uh and and that was that was labeled as socialism um whereas i would say that that is actually altruism because it's voluntary and you're not expecting anything in return and then you could walk away from that transaction at any time right and so i'm not obligated to you know send christopher money but I can choose to send Christopher the surplus of my labor and uh, and he can use that then to take care of his mother. Right. But I, I don't need anything and don't expect anything in return from Christopher. Whereas with socialism, there's a set of rules that he's agreed to to be part of that monastery, let's say. Right. Governed by a party or an individual. Yeah, calls for public rather than private ownership or control of property and natural resources. So you yeah. don't. You don't own it the fruits of your labor the collective so there isn't it isn't for you to give because you don't own it is what right. so with altruism saying. with altruism you own it but you can voluntarily give hmm. it and the only okay. really way you can own anything is through capitalism right i i so that, that's a question that, that may not be a true statement but it sounds it, it's pretty damn close right so here's a question anarchy you know france Sweden, Germany, these classic socialist nations, they're also democracies. You know, they have regular elections and they vote. And the vast majority of the population keeps on voluntarily voting for these socialist policies. So it would seem that, you know, they are voluntarily electing through democracy point. to instill a socialism. So would that be altruism or would that be socialism? They, they don't have that. Question. Not, that's not socialism. Right. They're, they, there's still capitalism there. There's there's capitalism and then the government taxes and then the government distributes wealth. But the only way the government can distribute wealth is because of the existence of capitalism. Hmm. So well, I, mean, I, I would think that a lot many people on a certain political spectrum would dispute you saying that france and germany and sweden aren't socialist that's kind they, of how they, they're stereotyped yeah but that's not the tr that's not true they still have a free market that goes parallel with okay. with, with with that right and the okay only so way you're saying capitalism it runs parallel with socialism is that what you're saying like the two uh, no no have to exist socialism can exist exclusive of capitalism in the form of communism Right. And, okay. And so whatever point, label on that plane doesn't matter what it is. You still have a a section of people engaging in capitalism, right? Some under, are engaging in capitalism, and some are engaging in socialism in the well, same well, space. Well with, well, with respect to communism, right? Nope. Nobody owns anything, and the and the government harvests the fruit of productivity, and then theoretically they distribute that harvest backed out to the people. Um, but what you see in these European countries that, that Patrick cited is that there is a free market going on, right? And then that free market generates the wealth, the productivity, and then portion of that productivity gets uh, uh, stolen by the government to be redistributed. And then some of that is reinvested by those, those companies, right? And so the, 
you know, 70 percent of Canadian um, um, wealth uh, is taxed to support the Canadian uh, medical system and other social endeavors. So it's a uh, blend of capitalism and socialism. Right, which which really which is, is really kind of like every fascist, like it is, is as close to fascism as you can get by definition, right? Because then the government directs uh, the endeavors of the business, and the business uh, directs the the endeavors of the government, uh, and there's really a fine there's there, it, the whole mm. thing gets muddied, right? It's very blurry, um, and it's and, and and fascism is closer to communism than it is to capitalism for sure. Uh, I, I lost my train of thought there, but but anyway, I, I, I apologize for dominating the conversation here, but I think these are fine distinctions that need to be laid out. And, and I don't think, uh, I think strongly that those those instances cited by Patrick, those are not socialist countries. They have socialist pro programs, right? Their health care is so, so does the U.S. to some degree. And degrees. so does the U.S., right. right. But they're not socialistic countries. Now, John, I want to circle back to something you said earlier. Uh, you said that it, the people continue to vote for their socialism year after year after year. Uh, now, let me ask you. Pa Patrick I, said that, not me. Oh, oh, I thought I thought it was. I thought I heard you say it. No, no. Um, anyway, Patrick. Okay, Patrick. Uh, so, the the question is, uh, that, well, let me let me back back up. There's a statement that says you can vote your way into socialism, but you have to shoot your way out of it. So the question would be, suppose uh, one of these nations voted 95 percent and it was a fair election there was no you know rigging of the vote uh would the would those in I, those in power do you think they would ever uh release their power uh given the, the you know the vote of the people oh you, you'd rather we return to capitalism okay we're going to do that we're going to return to capitalism you know i i have only ever lived in america and so yeah. i don't know what other nations would do but I think in theory, would. like in a democracy, you know, they, you know, if you pass or if you vote in officials and they pass laws, they can go as far right, as far left, as far social, as far communist, as far capitalist as you, the voters let them in theory. That, that's that, probably that's, why, that's probably why you have voter, uh, so much voting corruption in, in socialist nations that you hear about, you know, that, you know, oh yeah, the, the, the Chinese voted for such and such, but it was really like there there was a gun to their head. But see, th this is the total flaw in democracies. Democracies eventually devolve into socialism. And and that's historically accurate, right? And so, and, and I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll lay that out for you. Um, uh, politicians depend upon votes. And the way to garnish votes is by giving people things that they didn't have to pay for, right? And so if you want more votes, you give your constituents things by taking stuff from other people, right? Because you as a politician don't create anything. And then you give it to the people who will vote for you. And that, as you can see, that plays out and devolves itself into effectively communism at some point. Um, and that's where we are. And that's where Europe has landed since they uh, you know, dissolve the uh, the arist aristocracy and the king. Uh, you you end up more and more socialistic throughout the generations because more and more people demand more and more stuff. And if you read, you know, Ayn Rand or any of that stuff, right? It's like at some point, the capitalists they stop playing and they go somewhere else. And then the money leaves, the productivity leaves to another country. Money goes where it's tre treated well and treated the best. They leave, and then that country then is 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 left with um, uh, you know communism and falls apart under its own weight. So, to circle back to the topic, the is it so it's the capitalism that provides the value of a country, and it's the socialism that like redistributes that value, right? Is that is that where kind of where we're at? Yeah, I, I think that I, I'd, I'd go with that. So, so in, in it kind of seems I mean, like there's nuance, but I'd go with it anyway. So, is it kind of only one way where socialism needs capitalism? Is there where would capitalism need socialism? It wouldn't. Yeah, when when you're talking about distribution of wealth, there is another way that can happen under capitalism, and it's entirely voluntary and it's 
dictated by market forces and the wealth distributes itself. I mean, the, the being people off this, one of the things that really bugs me about socialism is that it just so often relies upon sleight of hand deception and misdirection. Like they'll, they'll say, Oh, this, this business is just corrupt and all oh, they're just taking advantage of people. Okay. You start a business and you compete with them and you can uh, take advantage of the, of the situation and you can bring down the prices. It's, Socialism relies on people not thinking, "Hey, I could, I could jump into this fight as well," and it just that, that's, that's one of the things that just really eats me, at me about socialism is that just that that whole it relies on people's um, lack of education. The problem is well, that I'll throw myself. These, to the, go ahead, Patrick. I'll throw myself to the wolves and try and defend socialism and why capitalism needs socialism. All right. So right. I go down the street to some bullwinkle wherever buy his meat, and it's terrible. It's rancid. It's not fatty. It tastes bad, etc. I'm never going back there. But then I go get some meat from John. John's meat's real good, top quality, etc. I'm like, oh, he's got my business now because he, you know, he treats me right as the customer, etc. And you know, that's what makes a market. You know, transparency, uh, quality, like being able to assess. But where I think some nations, you know, kind of key in on the healthcare aspect is that a lot of healthcare can't really function via a market because there's not that transparency. There's not a proper assessment of quality. Like, you know, if you need a quadruple bypass, you're going to need that once in your life. It's not like, oh, you can go reassess the doing the person doing the operation multiple times. Uh, you know, in some locations, they only have one cardi cardiac surgeon. And so like, right, you don't really have a choice. And since you didn't really go to medical school, like you really have no ability to weigh the quality of the hospital or the quality of the doctor. Like I would have the ability to assess the quality of John's meat being superior to someone else's meat. Uh, and so like, you know, what they say is that in order to provide a healthy workforce that can be productive within a capitalist system, we want to establish a, some rules and regulations so that the quality of health care can be increased across the board. Because, right, you need healthy, productive people in order for a capitalist economy to work. Like, right, if people were just getting gypped with fake medicine or fake surgeries all the time, they wouldn't be going to work. They wouldn't be working hard. They wouldn't be producing goods that could Patrick, be sold, shifted. Your your um your you're assigning to the government the role of arbitrating, you know, who's a good doctor and, and, and regulation and all that. You don't yes. actually need the government to do that. There there are third party like UI uh, UIL and uh, the Professional Engineering Association. All of these things are private entities. Uh, your university college uh, boards of certification, these are private entities. They're not government regulated. So you could do the same thing with healthcare. Plus, now we have ever more opportunity to evaluate somebody's competency, right? You have Yelp, you have Google reviews, et cetera. Yeah. And so I would rather, and you do this as well, right? You, you, you go talk to your neighbor. And you say, hey, we're about to have a kid. Do you know of a good, you know, pediatric um, doctor around, right? And so, and you Google that. And you don't go to your doc you don't go to your government and say, give me a list of pediatric doctors in their ranking because the government won't provide that. They'll just provide a minimum standard at which they have to um, uh, 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 perform to. But what you really want to know is what is the opinion of people I trust? And I don't know. I don't trust the government to give me that. And they don't they don't provide that. They only provide a minimum standard. And a good example of that is the education system. You have a lot of teachers out there and they, they pass a minimum standard and they go into the classroom. This is a beautiful example of socialism. Right. Yeah. And what do you get? You get an ever devolving education yeah. for, you know, generation after generation after generation. And that is the product of government. My doctor you is. Know, I, uh, is uh, oh I I I want to give you a chance to finish to, to speak, Patrick. Go ahead. 
I will say that you really don't want to go to Yelp or personal connections for doctors, right? Oh. The whole point is that, you know, because we didn't go to medical school, or at least most of us, and most of us don't have experience uh, in the practice of medicine, we don't really have accurate abilities to assess the quality of the services that we get. Did you like, not learn right, anything in the last three years? About that, about, uh, about me, the. Okay, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example <laughs> in the last six months. So in December, my wife goes into labor, right? And we were, this was a premature birth. We hadn't decided the birth plan, et cetera. So she's in labor trying to decide if she wants an epidural or not. She gets seven centimeters dilated. She decides she wants an epidural. The nurse calls it in, comes over to my wife, like real quiet. She's like, Allison, I need to tell you something. This doctor, he's a bit gruff. He's a stereotypical middle-aged Russian man. And when this doctor came in, he was exactly what you're imagining to a T. Didn't say hello, didn't ask how she was doing, didn't really act like he gave one single solitary bad word to Allison. But he did his job unbelievably well. He numbed her up perfect. So she, she couldn't feel a thing, but she could still use her legs. He was had no bedside manners whatsoever, but he was excellent at his job. And I would bet you that his quote unquote Yelp reviews would be a lot worse than doctors that are nice and you know get to know you and know your name and all that, but they're not half good at their job. You know, humans but you aren't just gave always good, the best. You just gave him a good Yelp review. Right there. In the <laughs> conversation. I actually don't That's know fair. if there's a doctor's That's Yelp, but I would give him a good review. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think like the grades, point I'm yeah. trying to make is that like right when you go down and you know get your haircut you can automatically assess how good that haircut is but there are some areas where the average person isn't as good as assessing the quality of the job you know i i really don't know that much about cars so when i go into the mechanic and they say oh your caliper on your brake pad is rusted and needs to be replaced and i i don't know Okay, go do it. And how how good of a job did they do? I don't know. But that's not government so, regulation. Like, there, there's no government regulation on your auto mechanic. This is a perfect example because there is government re regulation on your barber, right? But there's not on your auto mechanic. But there's the so American Association of Auto Mechanics or whatever it is, and they have a a, 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 a plaque outside, right? That says that that's yeah a a a s e that says you know I I've been. I've met this minimum standard. I've gone through this this program, and so you can use that. And and I don't know about you. I do Yelp my my mechanic, and I do Yelp. I don't go to a barber, obviously, as you can see. Um, but <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, I, we're we're devolving from the original topic. But I would argue that there are governing bodies out there that are non governmental, right? Or I should say, there are there are uh, regulating bodies. That are non-governmental, uh, and I'm not, uh, I, and I'm fully supporting that. Right? I, I think that we should have more of those, and I think that they would do a much better job than the government in regulating, um, you know, basic criteria, uh, you know, uh, as far as qualifications go, because the government doesn't do a very good job of it. I think we can agree that actually, <laughs> you know, Patrick brought up a really good point about your uh, triple bypass. Uh, that is inadequate uh, Yelp and those kinds of things is, is inadequate for assessing a doctor with that, with, with poor bed sky skills, but excellent. So, you know, uh, anesthetic skills. Um, I think we can probably agree that just, there really is no good recommendation solution. We don't want government being the, the body and we don't want necessarily trust that, uh, people are going to make the best reviews. Uh, we just sort I, of have to we sort have, of have to be knowledgeable for, in ourselves. I, I have a counter for that, right? And so yeah. uh, there is the insurance agency, right? And yeah. so and so the insurance agency would make sure that those doctors were proficient in their task, right? Otherwise, they would end up having to pay out claims whenever they fail. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so and, and that's so a private you, and that works it, very well on a private system. Right. If it was a, if everything was a private system, if you didn't have the government 
basically um, not allowing you to sue vaccine companies, right? It's yeah. a good example. Um, you would then have an, they would have to have an insurance policy. Same thing with your auto mechanic would have to be bonded and licensed to be able to practice in the event that, you know, he did a brake job and that brake job failed and you crashed your car, right? And so if enough of those things happen, they would lose their insurance coverage, right? Or their deductible would be exceedingly high and that would effectively put them out of business. So, so my counter to uh, what you just said is, is there are insurance policies and, and, okay, and so you would have to be insured or else yeah. you wouldn't go to somebody that's not insured. A doctor wouldn't, I mean, a hospital wouldn't employ a doctor that was uninsurable. So we're, we're, we're approaching the problem in a different way. And I like that. Um, but it's just, I want to invert what you just said about doctors and insurance. Uh, I'm very, very glad that my doctor does not take insurance because he is then free to apply to uh, me what the, what he thinks, in his opinion, is uh, is the best treatment for me. For he, example, he, he is insured he, though. He, uh, okay, he's not accepting your insurance, but he has a, he has okay. a personal has liability. Okay, that makes that, that, liability I, I, insurance. I yeah. follow you. And I'm not talking about you. your your healthcare insurance. I'm talking okay. about liability but you, insurance. But yeah. you can hit that from two at two different angles because if the provider does a terrible job at whatever service he's providing, the ins insurance may not uh, health insurance may not let them be in network. So there's there's also two yeah. sides to that. that if you if your health insurance was actually working for you, yes. Right. They they, they yeah, would they, they, they would advise you on where to seek treatment at that serves your best interest. Unfortunately, they're not really working for they're you not. in capacity. They're trying to make their not own most money. of them. Yeah, yeah. correct. Because that is also regulated that industry. And it's not a, a, a you know, true capitalistic uh, endeavor. Right. Oh, no, um, no, it's not. Yeah. I mean, it be, the fact that you get you most people get their insurance through their employer. Uh, corrupts that entire endeavor, uh, you know. How does that? How does that corrupt that entire endeavor? Uh, because when you change, when you change uh, employers, you can then be denied coverage for pre-existing conditions, right? They, Whereas they if can. you, uh, well, they just passed this that you can't. But it used to be that you could, and that's used why. To, they, yes, they, that's why they changed and that. A, in, a in capitalistic and a capitalistic time. healthcare system, you could be denied. But when you start to kind of pull in some socialistic tendencies now you look at obamacare for example you know there's you could argue that that has a some socialistic tendencies to it and there were a lot of good things i mean i work in healthcare so uh -huh. health insurance there were a lot of good and i was very much against obamacare but you look at some of the things that came out of that reform there are some good things that came out of it uh but but in the 70s uh, i think it was in the 70s as um you know health insurance wasn't part of your employment package Right. Correct. And so and so before that, people bought health insurance private and, and they bought that whenever they were healthy and they got to keep that for the, the whole life. And then eventually companies started to, instead of paying employees more money, enticing employees to come work there the by offering package. them health insurance. Right. And then the government mandated that, that if you have employees over 500, I think it is, you have to provide health insurance. Right. And so that's where the, the system got off track. And really, it's because of government intervention. I do oh, that like that we have, we still have. A, there we go. I do like that uh, we still have a choice in providers, like doctors. Uh, well, for now, anyways. So, like, we we brought my brought my son after he was born to like this this pediatrician and everyone says that he was, he was the best. He was great. And so like, he actually had a, an availability and blah, blah, blah. And so we, we met him, did like a checkup and had like a couple questions. And like, just the fact that we like had a couple questions on like, uh, on like vaccines or whatever, he was like ready to just walk out the door. Cause he basically was like, you know, uh, Hey, this is what you're going to do or, I don't want you as a patient basically okay. like that. That's what he said without saying it. And so, um, we, we never saw him again. Wow. It's good that you had that conversation up front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Now, if we were, I, maybe if we were in a different healthcare system, you wouldn't, 
you wouldn't have a choice. You'd have to go see him, right? right? Yeah. So, so I guess so. Getting back to um, the, the 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 foundation of the discussion, um, you know, I would contend that uh, you. So again, with altruism, you can't have altruism really without capitalism because there is a surplus of of um, productivity in capitalism. Hmm. Whereas in 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 socialism, and let's talk on a state level at communism, I wonder how many people actually voluntarily gave of what they were given to other people that were in need, right? Because the government kind of subsumes that role as the care provider of those that, that need to help, right? And so if you're living in Soviet Russia, right? And, you know, did, did, was there GoFundMe campaigns? No. <laughs> was, was there people like donating to the Red Cross? No, there weren't. There weren't. You have to have a capitalistic model where people are, you know, again, they're, they're, they generate wealth, they generate a lot of wealth, excess wealth, before, beyond what they need. And then they donate that to organizations that go out and do good. And I don't think you see that in communist countries. So not hmm. in communist, but again, like, you know, picking on the European countries, like one of the most group me's, or not group me's, uh, GoFundMe's are for medical issues. And right in America, we are all very philanthropic and altruistic, as you say. I think the evidence does support that. Like, right, we give money when causes are needed. But in Sweden and France and Germany, they don't have to do that because the healthcare system is structured in a way that it covers everyone. So, right, how yes, they, they are as cover altruistic. Everybody? How does it cover everybody? But the, the the way that it does that is by stealing their surplus wealth. Well, again, I would say that they're democratic nations and they keep on voting in politicians to support the structure of their healthcare system. But, but my point is, that, is once like, you vote that in, you can't vote it, can't out. Vote it out. Yeah. Yep. Okay, your way that, out of socialism. <laughs> that that might be true, but the point I'm trying to make is. They have voted in politicians, and they have they have the system that they have, but there doesn't need to be healthcare philanthropy in those nations exactly because they have a system that gets everyone covered poorly. I'm not like disputing your point. I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree I with you. Is, I, I don't yeah, disagree I th- with you I, at all. Yeah, I, I, I think, think there's so, a lot of evidence. I, I think that breeds um, behavior that is irresponsible and 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 i'll give you an example of that right if you know you're going to be taken care of from a healthcare perspective how much incentive is there for you to take care of your own health right for you to buy high quality food and and for you to go out and exercise and so i think that socialistic model breeds by definition it breeds poor behavior you know in, a, in the vast majority of the people and so we have a drug epidemic in this country, right? Well, if those people actually couldn't, if they didn't get free money from the government to do nothing all day and, but consume drugs, would they be forced to do something else? Probably they would be more productive citizens as opposed to being junkies, right? And so the same thing could apply to the medical system. It's like, okay, I don't have any motivation to take care of myself. Somebody else is going to take care of me for me, right? And what's funny in those other countries is that, yes, you have like your your socialist like medicines, like everybody's covered. But the wealthy buy additional coverage on top of that, like they uh, or they fly um, to the U.S. Yeah. 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 Or inside that own country. I can't. There's still private hospitals. There are. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Because the waiting line is so long. Right. If you want an elective procedure under that uh, socialistic um, model, uh, elective procedures are like two, three years out. Wow. I think you're thinking of certain socialist nations like Canada and the United K- the United Kingdom, but I think many, quote unquote, socialist countries like in France and Germany, you can actually see specialists quite quickly and get problems quite resolved. Uh, I would rather keep my own capital and take care of my own health care as opposed yes. to giving up 70 to 80 percent of it uh, to, uh, you know, to have the, the advantage of a, of a health care system. Imagine how much wealth you would have 
if the government t didn't take 30 percent of your wealth and how much well, your so insurance... i think their reply would be that you actually do get to keep more of your money in a socialized healthcare system again yeah, so like speaking yeah. just narrowly within the healthcare system like right we have a lot of different insurance companies and we have a lot of different providers and they're all in different networks and so there's this massive amount of paperwork that goes back and forth is your claim denied accepted etc dot your t's cross your i's etc uh there's all this paperwork and bureaucracy about who gets paid and why and what rules to follow in network outward etc while in these other countries because they know everyone's covered they know all the systems they know all the doctors there's actually a lot less bureaucracy in other nations so i think something it's about 20 percent of the united states healthcare spending is simply in administration you know paying the healthcare claims submitters and healthcare claim approvers all the paperwork the lawsuits about etc it's a big While mess yeah most other yeah. first world nations average about five percent of their total healthcare spending going to administration so that's mm -hmm. about 15 percent difference that we spend on administration because we have all these markets that send paperwork back and forth and bureaucracies uh i i would each other. i i would I, w I don't know the answer, um, and maybe Jeremy does. How much of that is driven by government regulation? All, all of that is administrative yeah, that's activity. A good question. And if we didn't have it. that well, government reg uh, administration, yeah. how much of that would go away because, you know, Medicare and all of these other um, um, programs that the government mandates and, and interactions between hospitals that the government mandates? Uh, I don't know the answer. But I bet it's a lot. No, I mean, I, and I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, that's beyond me. But well, um, well Christopher's I, I would, Chris, Christopher's doctor doesn't take all of that, right? My doctor right. doesn't take all of that, and so um, and I love that. Obviously, there's efficiency gained by not having to participate in the regulated system that they're they're operating in, because my doctor charges a lot less for yeah. services than I would get through my insurance. So my I don't know. Pay is my copay when I or for a uh, standard doctor is about the same as when I just go to the front desk at the, uh, at my doctor. It, would, it didn't really change all that much when he, he uh, originally he started on insurance. And he, yeah. I don't know how limit. much of that is a product of our, of our, um, you know, uh, uh, insurance versus the regulatory uh, rules in place. But anyway, Christopher, what is this? Is this accurate? Did we fact check this? Uh, well, I shared this meme because it's. <laughs> yeah, I shared this meme because uh, it it just highlights that we're in it, the medical medical system is just complicated and difficult, and it's not mm -hmm. an easy problem to solve. And, and no matter which way you approach it, you're gonna have issues. Like you know, in the United States, it's super expensive. In the in the UK, it's super long. In Canada, they just want you to kill yourself. <laughs> but that's the thing, yeah, though. In, in the US, pod. it's not. It's not that expensive in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, it's not. But yeah, but you've heard of the uh, the Iron Law of we John talked Lewis. about it on this podcast before, where the where where you can only have uh, quality, cheap, and fast. You can only pick at most two of those, and then in, in the United States, we've chosen, um, you know, more quality, quality and fast and and faster. I wouldn't say it's perfect either. Oh, there's John. There yeah, yeah. I hit the. I was trying to zoom in and I hit the X button. <laughs> How's it? Do we make him mad? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I mean, I would argue though that in the U.S., the I mean, healthcare is not that expensive. I mean, if you have, no, I mean, if you don't have insurance, all right. It's, here's an example. My son broke his arm, um, four, five, six years ago, and we had, uh, we were. We had a pre-Obamacare health plan, and we, it was right after, I think it was right before, or right at about the time that Trump got voted into office, and he had already made a statement that he wasn't going to enforce the individual mandate. So there wasn't going to be a tax on not having a, a an ACA-approved health care plan. So we went and we bought a pre-Obamacare health plan. Terrible plan. Absolutely terrible. It was a, it was a catastrophic plan, and... Of course, my son breaks his arm, and it's going to cost us like seven thousand dollars. Whereas, if we had had insurance, it would have cost us our deductible, and you know we could have been out there for you know a thousand, fifteen hundred max. 
Well, I go to the healthcare provider and they, they bill me as an individual without health insurance because of some glitch in their system. And it was like 50% of what they billed us. So instead of being $7,000, it would have been $3,500 if I didn't have the pre Obamacare health plan. So the system is screwed up to begin with. Like it's so big and bloated and, you know, providers bill this exorbitant amount because they can, because they know that they're going to pay a fraction of that to insurance companies or, or because of insurance companies. So they, they, they've got their billable amount way up here, knowing that they're only going to pay this, but then you've got this crappy healthcare plan that you come in and, just, and they're going to bill you this, this really exorbitant amount of, of, of money because that's what your, your insurance covers. So if you've got good insurance, decent insurance, it's cheap. And if you don't have insurance, well, it can still be kind of cheap. Um, hmm. Are you guys so I, with uh, the crowd health model? Um, yeah. Well, oh, the health share. Health, well, it's, yeah, it's, healthcare. it's effectively, yeah. yeah, health share, which I guess, you know. And that, we almost that, got that, onto that at one that, point, that's but a it social, was not going that, to be any cheaper. That's a pretty much a socialist Same. program, it right? Mm, because you're, it's, you're it's, voluntarily it's, agreeing to a set of rules. Uh, but well, it's got a private it's not, piece to it too because you get the key volunteer. a chunk. But but it, it, I shouldn't say so, socialist. It's altruistic because the money that you have in the system, you can you can use to pay other people's health care, right? And then you get rated on your uh, participation in the system. And then if you have an emergency, people will give to you, and they kind of look at that rating. It's like, is he a good team player or not? Which is, it's an mm. interesting model. Um, yeah, I've looked at it, and it's basically like, "Hey, get off my back!" So I don't get fined for not helping health insurance. But it, I, I've heard a lot of stories. If you need it, it kind of screws you too. Oh, no, so, is that right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I it's not, I and it's not it. cheap. No, yeah. but it wasn't. It wasn't as cheap as we wanted it. We we were hoping that that option would be cheap. Yeah, uh, and it really wasn't. I, I have health insurance that's uh, pretty good, but I choose not to use it um sure. because uh i guess to christopher's point I, I pay the same amount not using it as my copay would be and then i know my doctor isn't isn't um you know it, it doesn't have to play by the rules that the insurance company uh you know mandates on him right sure and mm -hmm. so i have i don't remember what it's called but it's like a private i don't know there's a name for it but he's out sure. he's, he's he doesn't accept insurance we are uh Past time. So anybody got anything to like wrap up on or should we go do plugs? Everybody what? good? What? Hair yeah. plugs? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saved you for last for a reason. Okay. Uh, Christopher, more hair go ahead. Yeah. All right. So I am working as, 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 as difficult as it's been. I've been working on a uh, product that – monitors the chicken coop and soon moving into all of the backyard space what's it called it's called secure coop and then i'm going to be moving into secure farm once i get the the core of secure coop working like it's supposed to and it's nearly there uh and uh and so i'm going to be uh producing a video to cover to show that as well pretty soon with a, with a demo but i don't know exactly nice when. yeah with jeremy's help i'm sure right <laughs> i'll test it i'll test it for you no, you oh, got to yes, do sir. a video for free. Yeah, but uh, the, the, this one is just going to be just just me. But you know, when when it comes time to do a little more beta testing, Jeremy's the man. Um. Anyway, so it's going to be a coop door opener with phone notifications. I work for a very large uh, financial company in the IT department. I've learned how to manage servers such that they don't uh, go crash and burn, and uh, taken those same principles and applied them down to the coop level. So, so your chickens can have get a Bach IRA. Yes, and uh, <laughs> with, with insurance. <laughs> that was that was bad. Yeah, I know. I know. I've been working on it for months. I'm so confident mm. in my ability to uh, deliver notifications to about any kind of issues that if there is an issue that comes up and I don't notify you of it and you lose your flock, I'll replace your entire flock up to 20 birds. So mm. I'm put that guarantee on it. Uh, get the website at securecoop.com and there's a coupon below. And there is also a mailing list and an ebook. So get those and compile it. And on the mailing list, I have a coupon as well. So get on the mailing list as well. You know, I'll give you updates when when things are ready. 
Awesome. Thank you, Christopher. And Patrick, where can people find you? Patrick Heiser on Twitter. That's my only social media. If you're in Western Maryland, DM me. Stop on by. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And John. Uh, yeah. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Amber Oaks Ranch, uh, amberoaksranch.com. Uh, we do publish a weekly newsletter. Kind of fun to follow along and, and read about what we're up to at the ranch here. Jeremy. Do we like donuts on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and the Twitter? What's so funny, <laughs> it's, man? It's still a stupid name. It's so dumb. <laughs> it really is. But it's it too late tension. to change it now. Well, it's we'll too late to it. change it. It's is, good. It, is it like Dewey is like donuts? Or is it Dewey likes? Like, is right. it? Tell him the story. Uh, yeah, please. Give me a couple minutes. All right. So, oh, all right. God. So, my wife and I, 15 minutes. That's all. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'll wrap it up in like a minute. <laughs> so, early early in our marriage, like, we had no money. Like, so our dates were just like, we'd go to like the pet store and we'd you know, walk around, look at all the pets and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And we walked by this, this, the, the birds one day. And there's this bird that had this feather sticking up on the back of its head. And it was like, that's a really funny looking bird. And we came back the next week, and it was still there. And I was like, we got to name that bird. And so we named it Dewey. And so, like, for weeks, it was just there. And it was like, hey, there's Dewey. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was trying to come up with a username a long time ago for something. And I was like, I was channeling that stupid bird. And I was like, Dewey. Dewey. Donuts sound good right now. Dewey's like donuts. <laughs> He was I bet, hungry. Dewey, he likes, I bet Dewey would like some donuts. Dewey likes donuts. Yes, he do. He do he do he like donuts? Yes, he I don't know. It was dumb. It's so okay. stupid. Got it. Got but it. I created a TikTok page a couple years ago and you know got a couple thousand followers, and then it was 10 and 20 and 30 thousand followers, and then it was like I'm gonna change it, but I was like, I got 75 and that but 250,000 now, and I was just like, I can't change it at this point. Yeah, and it's got a good story, so I think you should keep yeah. it. I'm gonna so, start a Jeremy like, like donuts. Oh, please do. I will troll the crap out of you. <laughs> I'm just going to repost all your videos. Go for it. In an alternate universe, that bird, Dewey, has a TikTok that is Jeremy like Dunks. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You right. should put like that story into like one of those image generators and see what it pops out. You should. Image just, generators, what do you mean? Like, okay, uh, yeah. like, 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 like mid-journey, yeah. Do we like donuts? And what the whole story? Just Eric play it off. Bird it. eating a donut. <laughs> make it a whole story. Yeah, make it a whole storyboard. All right. And I'm Matt from uplife.com. You know what we do. Uh, next week, we're talking about what was it? Wildlife management. That's what it is. Uh, I there was like some chatter about it uh, over the weekend on Twitter, and so we're going to talk about it. Like. Do we have good wildlife management or bad so wildlife living, management? Or in what state you live in. Capitalism management. Uh, yeah, that is true. That's a good point. All right. That's yeah. next week. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, and, Matt. Yep, thanks. Uh, see you next week. Thanks, thanks everybody for listening. See you.